Hello. Uh, okay, I, I wanted to film a sort of introduction, I guess, and sort of explain why I'm doing this. Um, my name's Kitty, and I'm a biomedical science student majoring in human genetics. Um, I have Ellis danlos Syndrome, which is a bitch. <laughs> It's extremely complicated. Um, essentially, it's it's a genetic disease affecting collagen, and collagen isn't just in your skin. It's literally the glue that holds your body together. It's in everything. Like your eyes are pretty much made of collagen. Um, you know, it's in your bones, it's in your organs, it lines your blood vessels. It's yeah, it, Ellis Danlos syndrome is kind of like Murphy's law syndrome. You know, it's like anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Um, yeah, the biggest problem for me is because it makes my joints really loose and fragile. Um, I dislocate joints multiple times every day. I wake up with uh, usually a hip or a shoulder out of place, a bunch of fingers, a couple of toes, maybe an ankle. My ankles hate me lately. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I did. Um, yeah, it, chronic pain is the biggest complication for me personally. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's frustrating as well because pain pain and fatigue often go hand in hand. Chronic fatigue is a big problem with Ellis Danlos syndrome. Um, yeah, and chronic pain makes you fatigued. So it's it sort of escalates itself, I guess. Um, the pain I get isn't just because of dislocations, it isn't just in my joints. I get it in my muscles as well. Um, yeah, I, I have a lot of people with Ellis Danlos syndrome have a secondary sort of condition called fibromyalgia syndrome. Um, there is believed to be a form of fibromyalgia syndrome that just happens without any other cause, but in people with Ellis Danlos, it yeah, it, it does lead to fibromyalgia syndrome. Um, yeah, fibromyalgia basically means being in pain all the time. So between that and my EDS, I am never not in pain. Um, as a result of that, I, I have to do a great many things to manage my pain. Um, that includes opioids. Um, I take slow release and quick relief, quick release forms of oxycodone. Um, the reason I wanted to set up a, I guess, a video diary type thing to kind of track my my experience with pain management is because so many people don't understand. Um, I've had a lot of issues with people who um, judge me really harshly for using pain medication. Um, I, I get all kinds of responses, you know, people who assume that I only take them because I'm too weak to handle real pain. So, yeah, I generally find that the people who say that have never experienced real pain. <laughs> I mean, um, this is horrifying to hear, I know, but I've had surgery without anesthesia or pain relief. Um, I know what real pain is. I can handle it. I can stay conscious through it. Um, yeah, I'm not weak. I am far from it, and I'm acutely aware of that fact. Um, it's the result of a lifetime of conditioning. You know, it's, it's not... It's not simply being born tough. I, I kind of don't really even believe in that, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I also get responses from people who sort of... They think I'm a drug addict because they, they don't know of any other kind of person who takes opioids. They, they only hear about the people who are, addict, who are a, addicts. Um, I read a study recently, if anyone's interested, I, I can certainly link to it. Um, I might actually do that in the, in the description. Um, that said that um, the current estimation is that around 3.27% of all people who are on opioids long term for chronic pain will develop an addiction. That, that's minuscule. Uh, like, that, that's fewer than 1 in 20. Um, and when you eliminate people who have never had any previous addiction, um, that includes cigarettes, alcohol, all that kind of stuff, it, anything, um, that goes down to 0.19%. That's even more minuscule. And that's the percentile I'd be in. I'd, I've never had any, any addiction whatsoever. You know, I've never smoked. I don't drink. Yeah, I don't need any more health problems than I already have, thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, um, so that the, there is this this total misconception. And, you know, it, it it's a problem with a lot of medical people as well. You know, a lot of medical professionals are opioid paranoid, as I term it, 
because yeah they 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 only hear about the the patients that they're supposed to be wary of you know they they're warned about you know drug seekers and that kind of thing so you know on on the rare occasions when i've had to go to the emergency department because i couldn't control my pain um it was a nightmare my god they automatically assume that you're a drug addict um yeah it it can be impossible and you know i, I on one occasion i actually had to I, I was pushed to the point where I blacked out from the pain. And apparently, according to the person I was there with, um, yeah, there was a nurse poking me, saying that um, she knew that I was faking it. Yeah, I th yeah, she realized pretty quickly that wasn't the case. But this is the kind of thing that people with chronic pain have to deal with all the time. And if I can do something to raise awareness and to help with that, then I want to. Um, yeah, so I, I hope... I, I hope this can make a difference to that end. Um, so yeah, if, if you like my videos, please let me know. And if, if there's anything that you want me to cover, um, please tell me, because remember, I, I'm also a biomedical science student, so um, the medical side of things is something I have a pretty solid understanding of as well. So yeah, um, I'm sure there was something else I was meant to say, but I have pain brain. So <laughs> please excuse me. and. Yeah, thank you for watching my videos.